Welcome back. We are now at week two of our cycle one science experiments. This week we are looking at two different experiments, um, looking at some of the processes that happen in living organisms. So again, the two things we talk about every week, one define biology. It is the study of living organisms and their vital processes, or the simple definition is the study of life and living organisms. The second thing you're going to talk about is the scientific method. You're going to review that. Again, our scientific method is our purpose or question, background research, make a hypothesis, the procedure, which includes your experiment materials, analysis of your results, and then conclusion. Draw a conclusion based upon the question or purpose. Okay, so again, as we talked about last week, Romans 1 does tell us that from the beginning of creation, God's invisible attributes um, can be clearly seen through his creation. And so we will continue to push that kind of idea of wonder and awe in these kids as we talk about um, the vital processes that happen in animals specifically today that um, keep life working, keep life going. So the first one is number 54, telegraph lines. This one is in regards to spiders. So our question or our purpose of this experiment is to ask, how do spiders know when they feel a vibration on their web, if it's something for dinner or if it's something dangerous or something danger? Um, so that is our purpose or our question. Then you wanna give some background research. What do you already know about spiders? What do, you, what do they look like? How do they catch food? Um, they build webs. Well, what are their webs made out of? How do they do that? Give some background research and some information. In that time, you also want to define the term vibration. Vibration is the back and forth movement of an object or material. Vibration is going to be important in this experiment and how spiders interpret um, the information they're getting from their webs. So our hypothesis then could be looking at our question, well, what do you guys think? You know, how do you think, um, before we do our experiment, spiders know when they feel something on their web, how do you think, um, what are your hypotheses on if they know if it's dinner or danger? And see what the kids have to say, what ideas they'll come up with. For this experiment, you're going to tie the string to two solid things. You can see I have it tied to two chairs. So you can, oh, sorry. You can tie it to two chairs, tie it to two table legs, have two moms hold it, um, whatever works best for your class. Then I'll have the kids line up. You're gonna have one student put two fingers on one end of the line while the student beside them or um, beside them what can go to the other end and pluck the string. The student who's feeling the rope, you want them to close their eyes, turn their heads, so they're not looking and gathering any other information except what they feel from their touch. Um, the student who's doing the movement or causing vibration of the web, um, you want them to do it really soft and then you want them to do it hard do it different intensities and see if this kid down here can guess, oh, that was a big thing that hit my web, or oh, that was really soft, or oh, I can't even feel that. Um, and see if they can tell the difference through the vibration of the web and then rotate through. Um, so every student gets to have a chance to feel, every student gets a chance to be the um, prey in the web uh, by causing different intensities of vibration. Talk about, analyze your results. Talk about what they felt um, through that. And then what are our conclusions? Well, our conclusion is that God gave spiders, number one, in a, an extreme sense of touch. Um, though they have a lot of eyes, their sight's not always great. And so they interpret much of their information through little hairs on their legs. Spiders, we know, have eight legs. And so their legs, much if you feel the hair on your arm, you barely just touch them and you can feel it. They have very refined um, 
sensation or sensory input um, that lets you know what's going on through the sense of touch. Same as spiders, the little hairs on their legs interpret that information. So when a spider feels a really big vibration, they know that's from a very big thing and that causes them to know it's danger. They often will hide, they may even cut the cord to their web to protect themselves. If it's really soft vibration, that could be caused by the wind or by anything just kind of barely brushing it but not getting stuck. If it's just right or kind of a medium or middle vibration, which a spider knows because God gave him the ability to know and interpret that data, knows that it's just right, they jar, dart out, cover that prey, and that's their dinner. Um, so that is how spiders interpret all the different vibrations through their webs, um, is through, again, the hairs on their legs and the ability to interpret that information to know if it's dinner or is it danger, and then how to react accordingly. The second thing we're going to look at is um, in number 56 called belly up. This is a basic experiment where our purpose or our question is, why do dead fish float? <laughs> you may have wondered that, you may have not, but when we look into it a little more, the processes, the vital processes in our study of biology of fish um, is actually pretty cool. And so for this experiment, that is our purpose, our background information needs to include this um, basic discussion on the anatomy of a fish, as well as a process that takes place in digestion in fish and in people um, and other animals, the, pro the process in our gut or intestines of bacteria breaking down food. When bacteria, which are these tiny little microorganisms that live in our gut, the good bacteria, they break down food, they break in what we take in, the nutrients and vitamins that we need get reabsorbed into our bloodstream, or for our fish, reabsorbed into their system, and then the leftover part, this process of the breakdown, releases gas, carbon dioxide, methane, especially in decomposition, um, releases this gas that gets left in our intestines until it rather sits there, or in humans, it passes through. In fish, um, it can rather stay in there. If God created that particular type of fish, like a manatee, to need lots of gas in their belly to help them float. Or there's other fish that know how to pass that gas so that they will sink and survive. Um, and so that gas that's released in their intestines can be um, helpful or um, in their life process. I'll explain later what happens. I won't give you too much, but you do wanna to talk to them about that process of decomposition in our gut, breakdown of food, good stuff goes reabsorbed into the system. Um, that decomposition produces gas, which then sits in our intestines, in the fish's intestines as well, until it is released or processed somehow. For this experiment, you will each have a big bowl. You want to fill it with water. Um, I've got about three fourths full here. You'll have a baggie and a straw. This experiment is a tutor demonstration only. So have your kiddos sit around you or stand around you at a table and observe. So you've given them the background information. Some of them may be familiar with this experiment or be familiar with the life processes of fish be able to fill in lots of great information. You want to put some water in the bottom of your bag. A little bit much here, but it, it still works if you get too much or too little. There's not really an exact amount of water. So you just want to be able to shut it up as much as possible to where you're going to insert a straw here at the end. And here you're just going to fill the air, fill the bag with air is the purpose of this. Okay. 
And I just keep blowing until I pull it out and then close it up. So now we have a bag which is simulating our fish. The water in the bag is simulating the fish's muscles, skin, guts, all that stuff, the things that are weighted in the fish. The air up here is simulating that gas that's in the fish's intestines, like we talked about. Um, what happens when that fish was decomposing or was, yeah, breaking down the food in their gut. Um, the difference is, so what is your hypothesis? What do you think is going to happen when I put this pretend fish or this bag of water and air into our simulating tank or pond? Is it going to sink or is it going to float? And why? Why do you think that? And so when you put it in there, doo -doo -doo, you can see on the video that it floats. And so now, why does it float? Um, for the older kids, you can go into talking about density a little bit and how when things, how they are less dense, they will float. When things are more dense, they will sink. We did an experiment on that last year and define density. Um, the general idea here that we're getting is when fish die, that process of decomposition in their intestines continues to happen. It doesn't stop. And so the bacteria continue to break down anything that's in the intestines, releasing more and more gas. That gas is not released or taken out of the intestines. And so the intestines fill more and more with gas or air. The intestines are located on the belly or the bottom of the fish. So as that fish, when it dies, the intestines fill with gas, the fish flops around or is turned around so the air that's in the intestines is actually floating. Um, and that's why the fish floats upside down when they're dead. Um, now the idea that we talked about briefly, you could talk about some more, um, is this idea that in fish they do have a swim bladder um, by their intestines which um, is contains oxygen or air and that as well as the gas in their intestines helps fish to control how high they are how if they float or if they sink um, so a, another god-given quality in fish that i did not know about or even think about um, that gives fish the ability to control whether they float or sink in the water. Um, and again, this process of decomposition is why dead fish float because the, it, the gas is continuing to be released and it's in the anatomy of the fish on the bottom, which is why it floats up top. All right, have fun.